Question number one, Mr. William Powell. Mr. Speaker, sir, this morning I presided at a meeting of the Cabinet and had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall be having further meetings later today. Mr. Powell. Is my right honourable friend aware of the growing public anger, resentment and, and anxiety about the waste of taxpayers' money by a number of local authorities in this country, highlighted yet again in today's newspaper, the Daily Mail, about Ealing. <laughs> Has not the time come for a full inquiry into this matter, and would not the best thing to do be to establish a special select committee of this House with full powers to call for persons and papers so that the true facts can be laid bare? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I have indeed seen the reports to which my honourable uh, friend's question refers, and if correct, they are a shocking indictment of the extravagance and profligacy of that particular local authority. Yeah, yeah. My honourable friend will be aware of the excellent work done by the Audit Commission in identifying waste and making recommendations, and it would be better if those recommendations were taken up more quickly. Nevertheless, I heard my honourable friend's suggestion, and I'm sure my right honourable friend, the Leader of the House, will have heard it. Bearing in mind that a large part of local authority spending comes from the taxpayer, I think he has a very good point. Yeah. Will Kellogg? Order! Order! Mr. Kellogg. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in view of his obvious desire to be of help to her, has the Prime Minister thought of putting the poll tax review in the hands of the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Henley? Yeah. After all, one volunteer is worth ten pressed men. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mr. Speaker, my Right Honourable Friend is well aware that the most unfair system of local taxation was rates. Yeah. Mm. I hope that the Right Honourable Lady will reflect on the fact that the Right Honourable Gentleman did have one good idea at least, and that was annual elections for councils, which has been Labour Party policy for some time. Uh, does, she, does, she, uh, does she recall... Does she... Um... Order! Mr. Kennock. Does she recall that local authorities were in fact tested last week and the result was a net 300 seat gain for Labour, yeah. a, net, uh, a net 11 council gain for Labour, yeah. and a major increase in vote share for Labour? Yeah. Or, on second thoughts, does she think that's perhaps what the Right Honourable Gentleman for Henley had in mind? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, oh, my, my Right Honourable Friend, the member for Henley had many good ideas in his article. <laughs> order, order, order! The Prime Minister. Which of course will be considered, along with many others, in the review of community charge to see what modifications and adjustments are necessary. With regard to structural changes in local authorities, I should thought the right honourable gentleman would be well aware that those could not take place during the lifetime of the present Parliament. May I also remind the right honourable gentleman that my right honourable friend, the member for Henley, was very right when he said this morning that this Conservative government will fight and win the next general election with a community charge. In place. Norman Tebbit. Ah, uh, come in, Norman. Come in, Norman. <laughs> Next, please. Order. Oh, no. Order. Oh, no. Mr. Tebbit. Would, would my right honourable friend not? Would my right honourable friend not consider very carefully the suggestion of our honourable friend of setting up a select committee? Oh, to not another one. After all, it could take evidence on the desirability of a roof tax and explore the possibilities and the, uh, the question of how that would be implemented. But would she accept that it should be specifically excluded from questioning any members of the Labour Party, however distinguished they are, as to whether they voted Conservative in the Ealing Borough Council to reduce the Friend may 
makes his point more powerfully than I can do. Those who turned out the Ealing Labour Council did a very good day's work. Yeah. Diane Abbott. Number two, Mr. Speaker. To the reply which I gave some moments ago. Abbott. Has the Prime Minister read the small print in Tarzan's election address, which was featured so prominently in the Times this morning? And did she see the reference to the virtuous... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And did she see the reference to the virtuous circle of falling inflation and a reduction in interest rates? And wouldn't she agree that with interest rates at 15% and a rise in inflation due to be announced tomorrow, she is so far removed from virtue on these matters that the best that she could hope for in a Heseltine administration is a position as the elected mayor of Dulwich? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, the level of inflation... The level of inflation that the, the, the level of inflation that the Labour Party criticizes today was way, way, way below what they were able to achieve during the greater part than the greater part of their office. We are also remind the honourable lady that in fact we have more jobs in this country than we've ever had before, and that is the basis of prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Shrewsbury. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honourable friend to reply which I gave some moments ago. Will my right honourable friend uh, take time today to consider the excellent local election results in Hillingdon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where the Conservatives won control? Does she agree with me that the principal reason for that was their proposal for a community charge of 289 as compared with the Labour proposal of 366, a reduction of 77 pounds? Yes, Mr Speaker, I congratulate my honourable friend and very much welcome the evidence that Conservative councils not only cost you less, but give very much better services. And I note even that, as my honourable friend says, there will be a substantial reduction in community charge under Conservative Council, that nevertheless, Hillingdon Conservative Council intends to spend an extra one million on schools to devote more resources to the care of the elderly and, and handicapped and to cut council committees from 100 to 30. Yeah. When, when the Prime Minister visits Scotland later on in the week, when she pledges her full support to the poll tax in Scotland, will she also pledge her full support to the Secretary of State for Scotland, as her friends uh, on the back benches is insisting he be sacked as the Secretary of State before the next election? Mr Speaker, my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Scotland, is one... My right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Scotland, is one of the best Secretary of State Scotland has ever had. Right? Mr. David Evans. Number four, sir. I defer my honourable friend to the reply that I gave some moments ago. Mr. David Evans. My right honourable friend might know that I have an interest in a certain football club. Yeah. Yeah. One of our sayings is we never change a winning team. Would my right honourable friend assure me, as she was our centre forward and captain in 1979 and 1983 and 1987, that we are not planning to change our winning team? Would my right honourable friend agree with me also that our supporters would be dismayed if we put a reserve team centre forward and captain on the field, notwithstanding the fact that the party opposite has second rate ideas, second rate policies, and as their own supporters know, a sub zero leader. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Order. Order. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's clear that my honourable friend and I share the same goal with my honourable, with myself as centre forward and my honourable friend on the right wing. We should make a winning team. Seamus Mallon. Thank you, sir. <coughs> I 
I defer the honourable gentleman to the reply which I gave some moments ago. Famous Mallon. As a major player on the world political stage for this past 11 years, the Prime Minister most surely welcomed the breakdown of artificial barriers throughout Europe. As she surveys those changes, does it not strike her that the division of Ireland is an anachronism, an outdated method which is not possible to work properly, either administratively, politically or economically? And would it not be the mark of real statesmanship if the de Prime Minister dedicated her, the remaining period of her time to solving that problem and to make it, and through it making her lasting contribution to a peaceful United Europe? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Gentleman is aware that the majority of people of Northern Ireland have clearly expressed their wish to stay a part of the United Kingdom. So long as that is so, they will remain a part of the United Kingdom, and I hope and believe they will remain a part of the United Kingdom. Mr. Robert Hughes. But whilst there are many improvements in management and efficiency needed in local authorities, has my right honourable friend seen the report from PA management consultants saying that those improvements that there have been have been as a direct result of the legislation passed by this government, and would she confirm that it is not the policy of her government to repeal this legislation and agree with me that the policies of the party opposite to repeal our local government legislation would be a disaster for everyone living in this country? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Mrs. Baker, I agree with my honourable friend. The provisions of that particular act meant that local authorities had to go out to competition for many services, as a result of which they got better services at lower cost. The audit provision has also been very active in saying where further economies could be made, and I hope that their proposals will be carried into effect. Yeah. Mr. Dave Nellis. I refer the honourable gentleman to the reply which I gave some moments ago. Nellis. Mr. Um... Is the Prime Minister aware that the whole House today will want to send its deepest sympathy to the family of William Cartman, the sixth British worker to be killed in the Channel Tunnel? A project that seems to be costing almost a man a mile. Does she think it is, and will she make it clear today, that it is entirely inadequate for the five companies of TML to be fined only £10,000 each for the death last February of another worker, and will she in fact say to the House today and to construction workers throughout the country that the government will bring forward emergency legislation to make mandatory a prison sentence on an employer who is found guilty of gross negligence following the death or serious injury of a construction worker. When is the carnage going to stop? Of course we are concerned about this tragic accident. As the Honourable Gentleman knows, my right Honourable Friend, the Secretary of State for Employment, is seeing the Chief Executive of TML later this afternoon to discuss the safety situation of the site. Health and safety inspectors are investigating the accident and they've taken immediate action. Two prohibition notices have been issued which have stopped the operation of the two tunnel boring machines in the marine tunnels. And it's too early to say what caused the accident. We all very deeply regret the accident and like to send our sympathies to the relative of the person uh, of the bereaved. Mm. Chaw. Number, number seven. <laughs> I refer my honourable friend to reply which I gave some moments ago. More. May I thank the Prime Minister for those remarks about the employees and workers down in Dover in connection with the Channel Tunnel. And on a different subject, may I ask her, may I ask her if she has, may I ask her if she has had time during the course of her busy day, if she has had time during the course of her busy day to read the newspaper reports about the remarks of the Honourable Member for Kingston-upon-Hull East, who seems to believe that sacked mine... No, order! The Prime Minister can't have responsibility for that. Get it in order. Order!
Uh, no, I take business questions first. Business questions, Dr. 